Okay, so welcome to this next Teach Happy vlog. I'm delighted to have clinical psychologist Dr. Hazel Harrison with me today. Hazel worked in the NHS for 17 years, specialising in working with children and their families. Uh, driven by her belief that prevention is better than cure, Hazel set up Think Avalana in 2015 with a mission to bring psychology out of the clinic and into schools and workplaces. Hazel works with schools all over the UK, helping them build their wellbeing strategies, supporting their staff, and also teaching uh, their pupils. Uh, last year, Hazel started working with the BBC to find ways to share her research and knowledge of psychological theories, neuroscience, and the science of wellbeing with larger audiences. And you might recognize Hazel from her uh, growth mindset and wellbeing live lesson it was streamed to thousands of schools, including my one when I was with the year sixes that year. Uh, recently, her wellbeing series uh, for Key Stage 2 PSHE lessons, The Brain Lab, has launched on BBC Teach. Uh, and during the pandemic, she has been the content creator for wellbeing lessons on BBC bite sized daily shows. Amazing background there, Hazel, uh, and thank you very much for joining me today. <laughs> thank you for that introduction. Yeah, and, and we, we had the privilege or I had the privilege of um, running a webinar with you weren't at the same time but part one and part two of the Oxford University Press uh, promoting mental health and well-being in primary school so that was great to work with you on that. That um, was really exciting and that was sort of the start of lockdown as well wasn't it when we yeah. were trying to figure out how Zoom worked. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and also trying to do it whilst our kids were trying to yes. bang on our little office yes. rooms. Um, so Hazel, my first question is, um, it's in the context of schools about to, I'm not going to say reopen because they've always been open, but actually open their doors to more students returning. Uh, and we're currently in a global pandemic. Children, teachers and their families will have been affected in kind of very different ways. Some will have got through the process relatively scot-free and actually had a nice time spending more time with family at home and things like that. And others might have been more deeply affected we know rates of say domestic violence have been on the increase since lockdown and people might have suffered bereavement and things like that um, and we've been hearing I've particularly been hearing particularly on on Twitter and other social media forums about the need for schools to be trauma informed uh, particularly as schools welcome back more students after lockdown so my question is what do we mean by that term trauma what does it actually mean Okay, so um, I suppose when we're really talking about trauma, we're talking about the response that we might have to a frightening experience. Um, so for, as you said, for many of us, the experiences that we've had over the last couple of months will be quite diverse. Some people may have really enjoyed this time. Um, others may have found every single moment excruciating and everything in between. And also, as you've mentioned, there might be um, other sort of more complex aspects that will have been detrimental for some young people, like perhaps being exposed to um, more physical or emotional abuse um, during this time because they perhaps haven't been able to go to places of safety that they may have been able to go to before. So when we talk about trauma, what we're really talking about is the response to adverse experiences. And I think it's important to remember that although we may go through very similar experiences when we're thinking about trauma, we're talking about kind of how we make sense of those experiences, how our brain makes sense of those. Um, and that will influence maybe a little bit about what happens next. So mm -hmm. some people won't have felt threatened. They will have felt very safe. They will have absolutely felt this sense of stay home and stay safe. And therefore, it's unlikely that they will have experienced this as traumatic and others will have had something very different. And when we talk about trauma, I guess what we're really talking about is a mix of things that some um, people will experience, which is a change in emotion. So heightened emotion often um, being a bit more kind of hypervigilant, maybe experiencing more anxiety and fear. We're also thinking about the sort of physiological response to trauma. So that can impact on sleep. We might feel a bit more edgy, a bit more irritable um, because of the change in sort of hormone chemical balance that's designed to keep us safe. But mm -hmm. when we have it prolonged, it can be quite challenging for us. And, and I suppose as well, there's an aspect of kind of um, 
when we're thinking about trauma during the pandemic, it's an interesting one because there's not sort of one specific fixed moment in time. This is going to have been prolonged and over a period of time, but for some young people, it will probably be punctuated by moments that were traumatic. Mm -hmm. And so those moments are the ones that we've evolved to kind of hardwire sometimes to make very vivid so that we don't repeat it. And sometimes we can experience um, Kind of very vivid memories that keep coming back from that moment so if you if we were to reflect on kind of what we remember from lockdown in a few years time there will probably be moments that we remember and we mm -hmm. we think of those moments as that time and that's what will happen with with those who perhaps also found this quite traumatic is that some of those memories will be a bit more hardwired in and they can be quite frustrating sometimes when you want to move forward because um you keep being reminded of them mm. Thank you.